Hey guys, it's Dare Down Time again with the fresh released IKEA Bioleza Smart Home Switches. Uh, there are two models, one with just on off and one with a um, dimmer wheel. Um, this is one euro more expensive. Um, they are both matter compatible, just like everything else in the new lineup. Uh, being matter compatible means that the protocol is now universal, so you don't need an IKEA hub in order to use them. Uh, if, for example, you have a HomePod that already comes with a Fred radio built in, Fred is the channel on which they talk to, and the matter is the protocol, which is again universal. So you can just pair them with your HomePod and use them to control your smart home uh, devices. Now, um, spoiler alert, I've already had a look inside of them, so this terrain is going to be quicker than expected. So that is the regular button, just on off and a simple uh, LED in the front. In the back there is a metal plate that you can stick on the wall and on the back here there are magnets, so this just sticks to it. To access the battery compartment there is a tab here. You go in with a screwdriver and just lever it out like this. And this comes off very simply. And what it shows is the two battery bays and three buttons. So it's on, off, and the pairing button. I didn't mention it before, but these are made in Thailand. Uh, the Alpstuga that I took apart um, a week ago was made in uh, Vietnam, I think. So they're not made in China. That's, that's the interesting part. So uh, we see there are four clips. One, we, two on each side. We can use that and lever it out like this and the same from the other side. There we go. And here's the PCB. The interesting part is that it's a single layer PCB. That's the cheapest PCB possible that one could get. There's just one screw holding everything in and that is it. So this is the single PCB, the, there are three full-size buttons, there are the battery tabs, some passive components all around, and then there is this red PCB right here that, if we zoom in, is the one that contains the microcontroller and uh, all the radio stuff. There's also... Uh, actually, I think the antenna is separate on this. Um, no, it's built in, never mind. So this is this part here is presumably the antenna, and this is the microcontroller. I will put details in a description regarding on what this is. So very incredibly simple construction. It's just a single sided board, so it's the cheapest possible with a single uh, surface mount um, components, a load of components. So nothing through hole, nothing that requires manual assembly. And then they just add this red board here on top with uh, some castellation to solder it down right here and here. And that is it. So that is incredible uh, uh, how they got it uh, so simple and so easy to manufacture in order to bring the cost down. So this again goes back here, single screw. You can also see the magnet as well. Um, that's the one that then joins the metal plate. So then again, single screw. This pops in. I guess this way, I didn't know I didn't know the which way this will go. Yeah, this way. Nice. And this goes on top. And that's it. Really simple. Now let's move to the more complicated uh, of the two, which is this one here. This also has dimmer capability using a um, basically a scroll wheel like this. So it's a very interesting construction. This is also a button, you can press it, but um, there are also three uh, LEDs right here. I think this lets you choose multiple uh, lights as well. So again, same uh, metal backing for, um, metal backplate for um, hanging it on the wall. Um, this time around, it's a two-piece construction. So there is also a back cover and this, again, we have the pairing button right here on the back. And uh, now this is uh, constructed a little bit differently. 
Uh, we need to remove the wheel first, which is clipped in. There you go. This reveals the encoder and the single screw. So we take apart this, and now we can separate the two halves. Again, very simple construction. There is just one more screw holding the board in, and here's the board. Again, very similar construction. Um, the red PCB here is actually different. I don't know why they they didn't chose for uh, they didn't go for an identical one. Uh, of course, this is a little bit more complicated because you also have to manage the encoder and the additional buttons. So you see there are way more um, contacts on uh, both sides. So uh, there's also this uh, switch here that is mounted on the back side. This is actually a hole in the PCB with uh, the switch mounted upside down. So that's pretty interesting construction. And they went with a smaller uh, low profile switch for the off button. So again, really, really simple. Uh, this is just one year more expensive, but it's uh, definitely a lot more complicated in terms of uh, components and uh, effort for manufacture. Just, just like twice the amounts of screws and multiple layers together. So they're probably not making as much uh, money on this uh, if they're making any. Um, there's also a nice feature here for um, separating the LEDs. Uh, there are actually two LEDs per channel, so that's probably uh, two different colors. Um, so again, just put the screw back in. Put the top, top cover. One more screw. And all that's left is to align the um, top wheel with the encoder. The encoder is notched. So it probably goes in around here. And there it is. So we just pop the back cover on. And it's back together. So again, incredibly simple construction. Super cheap. Uh, these are the all-new IKEA Matter-compatible Bureau Laser buttons. And stay tuned for more because I've bought the entire lineup and we're going to take it all apart. Thanks for watching.